For this video, we're going to see how to calculate the mode of a data set. If you're not familiar with the mode function, mode returns the item that occurs most frequently in a list. For this data set, we have a year's worth of ice cream sales. And let's say that I want to create a report that shows for each month what was the most popular flavor sold. So in other words, looking through all of the January transactions, which flavor occurs more often than any other flavor. I have this data set up as a proper table, and you can see up here in the corner it's named Ice Cream Sales. Let's bring this into Power Query and create a list of the 12 months, each month listing the most frequently sold flavor. We'll go up to Data, From Table Range. Power Query automatically applies data types, but the sale date column doesn't really need to be a date time. We can just make that date. Now we're going to end up grouping these by month, and if I were to group the sale date column as is, it would group each day. So let's take the sale date column, go up to Transform, Date, Month, and replace the dates with the month names. Because we're really not interested in the exact day it was sold, just the month it was sold. Let's rename the sale date column to Month. And now with Month selected, we'll go to the Transform ribbon, upper left corner, and perform a group by. We'll group by Month, and we'll create a new column called Flavor. Now we need a mode function, but the mode function isn't listed in this dropdown. So let's use a max function instead. We want to get the largest value found from the flavor column. Hit OK. Every month shows vanilla as the max flavor, not because it was sold more often, but because the word vanilla appears in the alphabet closer to the end than any other flavor. So it's technically the largest letter value, V. Let me expand my formula bar. We're going to go into this formula and just change this from a max function to a mode function. If you look closely, notice there are two different kinds of mode functions. There's list.mode and list.modes. If we choose list.mode, this will return the item that occurs most often in that month. But what if there's a tie? I didn't point this out, but in February, there actually is a tie. But mint chocolate chip is the only one that's being displayed because that was the last item encountered in that tie. If you need to return all items in the event of a tie, we need to go back up here and use the list.modes function because modes will return all ties for the most frequently occurring item. Now, one thing about using modes, where mode gave us one item each, so we got a nice list of items. When I hit check, list.modes returns a set of nested lists because I can't show more than one item in the same cell. If we click next to the word list in January, we see cookies and cream, and that's what we had before. But if we click next to the list in February, we can see that there was a tie, Rocky Road, Mint Chocolate Chip. And list.mode will always return the last item in a tie list. What we need to do now is extract the items from each of these lists. The problem is, normally we would have an expand lists option here, but the option is missing. Now I've done some research, but I can't figure out why this happens. So if you know why this happens, put it down in the comments because I'd love to know. So I don't know why the option is missing, but I do know how to get the option back in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the FX button and create a custom step. This custom step is going to use the table transform columns function. The table we're going to send it is coming from the prior step, grouped rows, comma, and we need to create a new set of lists. So lists always go in curly braces. The lists are going to come from that flavor column. So in double quotes, we'll put flavor. And what we need to do is we need to check to see if this row has a list, and if it does, regenerate it. So we'll tell it, for each row, if the current row is a list, then give me that row again. Otherwise, give me nothing. Now since each row does have a list, we'll never actually invoke the null option. We'll close parentheses for the table transform columns function, hit enter, and now we have our expand lists button back. Now here's a very interesting way to expand lists that you might not be familiar with. When we go up to the expand list button, we have two different options. One is to just extract the items as a delimited list, and the other is to create a dedicated row for each item in the list. If you wanted just a list of the 12 months, and then in the second column, a list of all of the most popularly sold ice cream flavors, we could say extract values, and then for each value in this list, we need to provide a delimiter. Now, a comma would be fine, but I'd actually like to have a little space between the comma and the next entry, so I'm going to do a custom delimiter and have that be a comma and a space. Hit OK, and there's our list of most popular flavor of the month. And as you can see, in February, we had a tie. Now, if you wanted each of those popular flavors to be on a separate row, 
like a separate transaction. Let's delete that extracted value step. We'll go back and do this again, but we'll use the expand to new rows option. Now you see in February, Rocky Road and Mint Chocolate Chip are on separate row entries. If this were me, I'd probably go with the prior version where we expand this as values and use some type of delimiter. I think that one looks a little nicer. Let's go up to home, close and load this back out into our Excel file. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here next to my data. And there we go, the most popular flavor sold within each month. So that's how we perform a mode function in Power Query. I've seen modes performed a lot of different ways, but for me, I'm thinking I like this method the best. If you have another way of doing this and you think it's better, please share it in the comments. I'm always up for seeing different methods. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.